Welcome to my dreams academy. So we are going to talk about events and uh, we are going to make statements, facts of the events. That was the same way we made with the actress. So as a method of learning, what was the first statement I made with Andrew? Now, if the artery carries away, the veins, number one, the veins carries blood towards to the heart. The vein carry blood blood to the heart. They carry blood to the heart. That is their duty. Is that okay? Yeah. Then the second thing. What's the second statement with the artery? Very good. So veins they carry deoxygenated. Veins carry deoxygenated blood, except pulmonary vein. So that pulmonary is a special thing. They carry deoxygenated blood, except what pulmonary vein. Is that okay? Good. What is the third statement we made in the artery? Yeah, yeah, so this one should have what? Thin walls. Veins, they have what? Thin walls. Thin walls. Very good. You see, if I learn the one that is giving the lecture. The, the fourth statement with the artery? Yeah, the vein is smaller in comparison to the wall. Thank you. So for the veins, the, the lumen of the veins, they are bigger. The lumen, lumen of veins is bigger. In comparison to the wall, it's bigger. In comparison to the wall, eh? Look at the 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 actually will be like this. Why the vein will be like this? Do you get that? The vein, the lumen of the vein is bigger. And what is the other statement? Uh, veins can be deep seated or superficial. So we have deep vein and what superficial vein. So Veins can be, veins can be deep or what? Super fissure. Super fissures are the one you see. When you look at it, you see it. There's through those ones they give you what? Injection. They don't give injection through the through the artery. If you do that, you just send that person to the grave. So you give injection through the what? Through the vein. And the blood in the vein moves towards the what? Towards the heart. So whenever you are giving the injection, you face to the heart. You inject it towards the heart. That is why when they set cannula, venous cannula in the hospital, it points this way. Do you get that? But in Hollywood, they point their own the other way because they are fools. They don't know what they are doing. That. So what is the what is the fifth statement? Veins do, the veins do not pulsate, so you write it. Number five, veins do not pulsate. Is that all? Yes. There's something else we are going to add about veins. We are not going. In, we, are, we are not going into special veins. Before we go into special veins, there's another C seven statement about veins. Some veins has valves. Some veins does what? They have valves. Do you get that? So that's number seven. Some veins have valves, some doesn't have. Do mm -hmm. you get that? Some veins have what? Valves. Yeah? So that is it. That's about veins. So we cannot enter into what? Special veins. Is it not? Yeah. So <clears throat> now, whenever I talk about vein, whenever I talk about artery, you say supply. Artery does what? Supply. Vein drains. Because it's returning. Look at the thing. Look at us the way it, it happens. The artery will carry the oxygenated blood and supply it to that organ. That organ will draw the what? Oxygen. Do you get the thing? Then this that the oxygenated blood will now follow the vein to go back to the what? To the heart. Do you get the thing now? That's it. So the vein does what? Drains. So which which vein drains the head and the brain? It's known as jugular vein. Do you get that? So the special veins. Huh? We're not talking about the special veins. Let me clean this thing. Between the veins and the wall. Actually. Very good. Now, special veins. For the head and neck, we have the jugular. The jugular vein. That is those veins you see here. 
their job. Eh? Are you there? Uh -huh. So for that special artery, which are which special arteries did we mention? That what will help you to know the special yeah. veins. That means there are, there is pulmonary what veins. So the pulmonary veins, they are, they are special. Pulmonary what blood. That is what makes pulmonary vein what special. special. Is that okay? Now which other artery do we talk about? Yeah. yeah? The aorta. Well, it doesn't have the equivalent vein. Oh yeah. Okay, it has. It has. It has equivalent vein. There, are the, there is the vena cava. Vena what? The cava. Two. They are the largest veins in the body. They are the largest veins. We have the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Both of them enters into the what? Right atrium. They carry all the blood from every part of the body except the lungs into the what? Right atrium. That is the special thing about the vena cavas. Is that okay? That's what makes them important. Hmm? So they are equivalent of the what? Aorta. Very good. <coughs> what else? Which other one? Coronary the what? There are there's nothing like coronary veins, so they are called what are they called? <laughs> sinus. Yeah? They are called the uh, uh, sinus. The, the veins of the that drains the heart are called what? Sinuses. Yeah? They drain the heart. Sinuses. Drains the heart. Yeah? Is that okay? Cardiac sinuses. Now, which other one? Rena? Rena artery. Then there is renal vein. Where does the renal vein drain? It drains the kidneys. The renal vein does what? Drains the kidneys. Oh, yeah. Which other one? <coughs> uh? Now, very good. For the liver, the liver has two sets of veins. <coughs> Excuse me. The liver has what? Two sets of veins. That's what they call hepatic veins. Hmm? You get that? That's what they call what? Hepatic veins. The hepatic vein drains the blood from the liver into inferior vena cava. Do you get it? Then? If this is if this is your liver, because my own doesn't look like this. <coughs> there is a vein known as hepatic vein. It will drain the blood in the hepat in the from the liver into inferior what? Vena cava. Like this. Eh? Yeah? Are you with me? Then there's another vein that is consigned with the liver. It is known as hepatic portal vein. Is that okay? What did I say is known as? Hepatic, hepatic portal, portal vein. vein. It's an important vein in the body. Do you know what is so special about this vein? <coughs> Normally, each vein begins from a sinus. Do you get that? Each vein begins from a what? A sinus. That is the capillary end. Do you get that? But hepatic portal vein begins from a sinus and ends in a sinus. It's the only vein in the body that begins from a sinus and ends in a what? In a sinus. Do you get that? <coughs> Excuse me. That's the first statement about hepatic portal vein. Begins from a sinus. A sinus, you can call it sinus or a sinus, and ends in a sinus. Do you get that? Another thing with the hepatic portal vein is that it carries digested food materials. <laughs> it carries, you have to know this, hepatic portal vein is very important. You put it in your head, very important. It carries digested food materials from the digestive system that's intestines from the intestines to the liver so look at this this, this is the digestive system these are the intestines what happens in the intestine is digestion is it not yes. from here rises the hepatic portal vein to enter into the world to the liver digestive food material so when you finish eating food, 
And that food gets digested and enters into into enter way into hepatic portal vein. Do you get that? Yeah. And from that hepatic portal vein, it gets to where to the liver. That is why every any toxin, any poison, any drug that enters into your stomach that eventually gets into the blood. We first visit the what? The liver. The liver is always at least. Now, the the other important vein, huh? which other one? Do we mention in the artery? So that we know. Uh -huh. The hepatic portal vein is, is an equivalent of the mesenteric artery. Uh -huh. Which other one? Femora. 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 There, there, there's femora vein that drains the lower limb. We give you the mention subclavian. Femora vein drains the lower limb. So then we have the what? Subclavian vein. Eh? The subclavian vein we drain the what? Upper limb. That's all for the veins. Any question? I don't have corona. I, having dealt with uh, the, the artery and the veins, we now talk about the capillary. Capi. Per se, they are not vessels, but we put them here for convenience sake. So the, the capillaries, they are the region or the area. They are the region or the area where the body cells exchanges material with the blood. They are area where the body cells exchanges material with the blood. I'm making an illustration on this white board. Just an illustration. This, I will explain what I am doing. Just don't feel that I'm doing nonsense. It's a nonsense that will make sense. So, <clears throat> let this be artery. This is an artery. When the artery approaches a capillary, the lumen, the caliber of that artery narrows, just as it narrows here, and it becomes what we call arterial. Do you get that? Are you with me? Then, you see, arteries, they end in what? Capillary. Do you get that? Where does vein originate from? They originate from capillary. They, so they originate as venu. They originate as venu. And when they now in, when their caliber increase, they will now become what? Veins. So this idiot at this center is the capillary. Look at that. Have you seen that every artery ends at where? At capillary. And every vein begins from what? From capillary. Do you get the thing now? Now, this capillary now is the region. You see, it's a region. You see, it's not like a vessel. It's like a, it's like a sponge. When you look at the diagram on the textbook, it looks like a sponge. So, you know, right? The capillary has a, the, the arterial end and the venous end. So, this is the arterial end. And this is the venous end. <clears throat> so the arteries, they terminate at the arterial end of the capillaries. And the veins, they do what? They originate from the venous end. Is that okay? Yes. Is that okay? Yes. <laughs> what is the major thing that the blood carries? You know, we have not, remind me, we are going to talk about the functions of the circulatory system. We are supposed to say it before now, but we are going to say it at the end. So let me put it with red pen. Here. Oh, this, this red thing is not right. Who gave me this thing? May the gods forgive you. So, functions. Let us remind at the end of the program, we talk about the functions of the circulatory system. Now, the major thing that the blood carries is oxygen. Is that okay? Now, you see this artery is oxygen laden. Look at the oxygen. It's oxygen laden. laden. Now, look at the body cell here. 
look at the body cell this is the body cell so remember what i told you about capillary is the region where the body cells exchange what material with the blood so look at the body cell you know animal cells this is the nucleus is it not this is around the cytoplasm is that okay there's another cell here abnormal shaped animal cells they don't have definite what shape is it not is not what we are told in the first page of biology yes. eh? no now eh, this guy carry oxygen it's coming with the oxygen this animal has produced what co2 what has it produced co2, CO2. because the simple chemistry is that when you eat food, that food becomes carbohydrates, that is glucose. Eh? You will now chop what? Oxygen. You breathe in oxygen. The end product will be what? CO2 and uh, water with what? Energy. That energy is stored in form of ATP, is it that? So who is bringing that oxygen for the cells to metabolize? Is there uh, the artery? You carry it. Look at the artery. Carry the cell. So when the when the artery brings in the oxygen, that oxygen will diffuse into the cell. As CO2 will do what? Diffuse out. This is what happens here. So this is where they exchange material at the what? Capillary. They will now exchange. So what will the vein now carry? CO2. Look at the thing. Yeah? Do you understand it? No. I said the artery carries oxygen. What does the cell need? The cell needs the word oxygen. oxygen. When it gets to this capillary, every cell lies close to a capillary. It's from that capillary that it gets something and gives something. Do you get it? So this cell now lies close to this capillary this artery will now carry the what oxygen when it, the oxygen enters into this capillary the cell will do what we grab the oxygen do you get it and we give the capillary what co2 do you get that the co2 will now follow the venous end to do what to go away that's why at the vision i said that the capillary is the region where cells exchanges material with the what? Blood. Nothing more. We are done with the capillary. Any question? No question. <laughs> Good, so having dealt with the blood vessels, still under the vessels, we have the lymphatic vessels. You see? Blood vessels carry blood so what do you think that the fatty vessels will carry they will carry what say it now they will carry lymph it's from the word the lymph that you get what lymphatic so the lymphatic vessels are the vessels that carry lymph hmm? from tissues back to the vein they carry lymph from tissues back to what the vein back to the vein you know ask yourself what is lymph look at that what is lymph that thing they call the lymph now it's better explained than defined you remember what i told you i told you that if this is an organ or tissue or cell what brings in the blood? What supplies the blood is what? The artery. And what drains it is the what? Vein. But do you know, unfortunately, if the artery supplies 30 mils of blood, the stupid vein will only drain 28 mils, leaving what? Two. If you keep on leaving these two, two mils to accumulate, the cells or the organ will swell up. And the swelling of the cell is known as what? Edema. Do you get that? You try to avoid the edema. So there will be, is it edema now? Huh? 
there will be there is excessive fluid still remaining because under the mass circumstances that 30 mils that the, the artery supply should also be drained by the vein but the vein is incapacitated to drain out of there so there is a there is a what a remnant that remnant is what is drained as what lymph so lymph is the remnant of fluid that the vein failed to do what to drain from an organ it is the remnant of fluid that the vein failed to drain from an organ hence they are drained through the lymphatic system back to the what vein so the key thing here is that the lymphatic system ends in where in vein so invariably the vein will still drain everything do you get that yes they end in in vein so normally you cannot see lymphatic even when you are dissecting human body it's very difficult to appreciate the lymphatic because the lymphatic vessels they have very thin wall in fact their wall is thinner than that of what veins in fact they have very thin wall hmm? do you get that they also have valves the lymphatic vessel contains valves just like some veins is that okay and just as i mentioned earlier they end in what in veins hmm? yeah there is one lymphatic vessel you should know it's known as the thoracic uh, duct thoracic uh, duct is an important lymphatic vessel that drains into the neck veins Hmm? That, that. Just know that what the lymphatic vessels carry is what? Lymph. And lymph is the remnant of fluid that the vein failed to do what? To drain. Any question? You look confused. Are you confused? Okay. Very good. Very good. What I say, what, you have a question? Two more lights on the dot. Two on the thoracic dot. Bring the light. <laughs> throw it on it. <laughs> so, yes, I say so I should throw more light on thoracic dot. Okay? I said that thoracic dot is an important lymphatic vessel. Do you get that? In fact, that thoracic dot, let us divide the human body. Hmm? If we divide the human body into four, into four quadrants, hmm? The thoracic dot drain one, two, three quadrants. Do you get that? Do you get that? It drains all the lymph from those regions into the vein. That's what makes it important. Do you get the thing? Uh -huh. Then the other, the fourth one that dot, that is not drained by thoracic dot is drained by the right. They call that one the right thoracic dot but the other one is the thoracic dot they don't attach anything to it but the one that drains only this one is called the right thoracic dot but you're not supposed to bother yourself about that thank you Got you. the last component of the circulatory system which we are going to discuss now is the medium what is the plural of medium what is the plural of medium media yeah so the medium so the media are the media of transportation are lymph and uh, blood do you get that they are the what yeah. the lymph and the blood why i'm why i why i mentioned lymph first not that the lymph is more important than the blood but just because we have mentioned it earlier and we're not going to say more than what we said before we say that the lymph is the remnant of the fluids which the vein failed to do what? To drain from an organ. And they flow through the what? Lymphatic vessels. And we say that the lymphatic vessels invariably ends in the vein. Do you get that? The lymphatic vessels, they don't get to the heart. They have no business. They have no direct business with the heart. Is that okay? 
Their business ends in the vein. Yeah. It's not the vein that will not take everything to the heart. Is that okay? So the major, the major medium of circulation is blood. So we talk about what? Blood. Because without the shedding of blood, there will be no remission of sin. Blood is very blood is life. Do you get that? So what is blood? Well, it doesn't. I don't know any definition of blood, but blood is made up of two components. Blood is made up of what? Two components. It has the plasma and the what? And the cells. Do you get that? The plasma and the what? Cells. That's what the major components of blood. So blood is made up of the plasma and the cells that are within the what? Plasma. Are, are you okay? Now, what, what makes up the plasma? Plasma is made of majorly of what? Water. H2O. Water. Water is very important in the body. Water is very important in the body. The plasma is made up of what? Water. Hmm? Another thing that we see in the plasma are electrolytes. Electro what? Right. In your chemistry, you did what? Electrolysis. Electrolysis. Do you know what is lysis? To lies. What, what does it mean to lie? Something. To break down. Very good. So electrolysis means breaking down with what? Electricity. So what is electrolyte? Electrolytes are particles that have electric what? charges. So what are those electrolytes? Sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarbonate. Is that okay? Calcium. These are the electrolytes that are found in what? In blood. Is that okay? What are that is in the, in the plasma? The plasma has proteins. What are those proteins called? They are called plasma proteins. <laughs> Do you get that? Do you get that? Like albumin, there's a protein that has albumin, globulin, and many of them. They are what? These are components of what? Plasma. Then the plasma will also contain and one of the other proteins are the clotting factors. You know, most of the clotting factors are what? Proteins. Yeah? Then the plasma also contains other, other, other things. Other things like nutrients. The nutrients are carbohydrates, lipids. Other things like hormones. Is that okay? And even exogenous things. You can get exogenous things from the plasma. Exogenous means something that are not inherently found in plasma. They are not always there, like drugs. Hmm? These are the contents of what? Plasma. Is that okay? Yes. Now, your yes, then you have to differentiate at all times between plasma and serum. And what? Serum. Plasma and serum. Serum is gotten from plasma. When you have done one thing on that plasma, do you know what you do to the plasma? When you have removed the clotting factors. Do you get that? When you have removed what? Clotting factors by coagulation. So when you allow blood to coagulate, eh? That coagulant, that solid one, the solid one is not the what? The coagulant. You remove it. Anything that is left behind is what? Serum. Is that okay? So serum is different from what? Plasma. Because serum does not contain clotting factors. That's very different between serum and what? Plasma. Is that okay? Get ready for that in your exam. Now, having dealt with plasma, as one of the components of the blood, we then go to what? Cells. We go to what? Cells. The blood cells. The blood also contains cells. Yeah. An adult has about five liters of blood. 
an adult like me, a good adult like me, has five liters of blood flowing in the system. Hmm? Out of that five liters, 3.5 liters are plasma. The other 1.5 liter volume is occupied by what? Cells. Is that okay? What are those cells? What are those cells found in the blood? They are, the blood cells are, one, red blood cells. Red blood cells. cells. Mm? Red blood cells. Mm. They are the one known as erythrocytes. Erythro means red. When you say that something is erith erythematous, you mean it's reddish. Like if I slap this yellow girl now, her cheeks will become reddish. I would say it's what? Erythematous. That, that thing is a what? An erythema. Do you get that? So erythrocyte. Sight means what? Cells. Cytology, study of what? Cells. You see? You are learning. All these things. Whenever you see a word, try to try, try to break the words down. Hmm? Is that okay? So erythrocytes, the red blood cells. Then we now have the white the white cells. blood cells. White blood cells. Which they call the, the leukocytes. The leuco means white. Then we have the platelets. Hmm? Platelets. These platelets, they are otherwise known as thrombo, thrombocytes because they are involved in coagulation. And coagulation is known as what? Thrombosis. Do you get that? That's why they are called thrombocytes because of the role they play in coagulation. Remember I told you God didn't give those things names. So, we discuss those cells one after the other. So we go first with the red, red blood cells. We go first with the red blood cells. So, even though it's called cells, it's more of a cup, a cup of soap. The red blood cells, we make some sentences with red blood cells. Yeah? The red blood cells, disc shaped, yeah? or by concave, yeah? it can alter its shape, alters its shape. Hmm? Is that okay? It has no nucleus. It has no nucleus. Carries the oxygen. It has a pigment. Red blood cell has what? Pigment has pigment known as hemoglobin globin. hemoglobin hmm? that hemoglobin is a pigment that carry what oxygen so it's not necessarily the red blood cell that carry oxygen because if a, if a red blood cell is devoid of hemoglobin is a useless red blood cell do you get that because it will not be able to carry what oxygen <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a useless red muscle, an adiburoja red muscle. <coughs> now, having said it about the red muscle, what else do we need to say? Nothing more. Remember, we said that the red muscle has biconcave shape. So, in some situation, normally the, the red muscle should be like this. But in some bad situation, it will have a sickle shape. Sickle. Sickle. That sickle you use to plug something. That's when you say that sickle cell disease. <coughs> now, let us talk about the white blood cells. There are many types of. Having dealt with red blood cells, can let us talk about white blood cells. <coughs> the white blood cells, there are many types of it. There are the ones they call lymphocytes, 
Nympho sites. That means they are many found the way. A lamp. Very good. That's what the one they call monocytes. Monocytes. <laughs> they are called monocytes because they have only one nucleus. So white blood cells, they have nucleus, and some of them can be multinucleated. Multinucleated is that they have many nucleus. All right. Very good. But monocyte has only one. Then you can have neutrophils. Hmm? Neutrophils. There are basophils. There are eucino. Fields. These are all forms of white blood cells, and they do several functions. Like these monocytes and neutrophils, they are called phagocytes. They eat. They, they are solid eaters. They engulf. They engulf particles. Engulf particles. Oh. Huh? Bacteria. So, if a bacteria enters your body and the neutrophil or monocyte catches that bacteria, they will engulf it. They will eat the bacteria. Do you get that? Just the way that Ameba uses his pseudopod to engulf something, they will form that pseudopod and eat it. Do you get that? Then, these basophils. They play a role in what we call hypersensitivity reaction. That's what they call hyper what? Sensitivity, sensitivity reaction. reaction. Like, as you may know, you have you have the you were stuck by a, a bee. Do you get that? The the toxin in that bee will stimulate the what? The basophils. They will release some materials. Is that material they release that will make your body to enlarge, to swell up? It's not the bee sting that made your body to swell up. It's what your body produced that made it to do what? To swell up. Is that okay? So, but the major function of the white blood cells is immunity. Because all these things we are mentioning gears towards what? Immunity. They help to fight diseases. That's the major portion of the white blood cell. So what's the difference between white blood cell and red blood cell? The major difference is that white blood cell does not have any pigment. And two, white blood cell has nucleus, unlike red blood cell. Red blood cell. Hmm? Then the last cell, the platelets. Platelets. <laughs> you see? You learn a lot of things when you listen to me. The other one is known as what? Thrombocytes. Because there are cells that are involved in thrombosis, coagulation of blood. Now, <laughs> platelets. Who can, tell, who, who, who can tell what you understand by the word platelets? Whenever you hear lets, it means what? Smaller. So platelet means what? Smaller plates, smaller plates. The textbook will not tell you that. Most of the authors of that text, they don't even know because they are copied from another source. You see, when that pig your father is rearing gives birth, what do you call it? Piglets. <laughs> so this one is like what? Platelets. Because they are like what? Plates. They are like disc plates. Is that okay? Very good. They don't have nucleus. Platelets, they lack what? Nucleus. They are involved in blood coagulation. That's why they are called thrombocytes. They originate, they, they originate from what they call the um, megalocytes. Like, there will be a very huge cell known as megalocyte. Megalocyte is huge. And from a bit of it, platelets will be falling out. You get it? You get that? That's how it forms. Eh? So there will be one source that will not be discharging it. That's why I call platelet. This is the big plate. So from big plate comes smaller plates that they call what? Platelets. You get it? Platelets contains 
All God knows. All God knows. Which secrets this organ is secrets active substances active substances of coagulation. Do you get that? They secrete active substances of what? Coagulation. That is so. That is brain dead for you. I think we have done justice to the medium of transportation. That medium of circulation is the, the media are lymph and what? Blood. And we have digested them here. Any question? Any question? I can see you are tired. We are actually coming to an end. So, what we are going to rattle, what we are going to rattle is now the functions of the circulatory system. The what? Functions, functions of the circulatory system. I'm going to dictate it. So, you pay attention anywhere you are watching. Eh? You pay attention or you rewind it and then listen again. Anyhow you do it is not my business. All I know is that I'm going to dictate the functions of the what? Circulation. So what are the functions of the circulation? One, it carries oxygen from the lungs. Where is that oxygen from? The lungs. It carries oxygen from the lungs to other parts of the body. Do you get that? Carries oxygen from the lungs to other what parts of the body. That is function number one. For function number two, it carries CO2, that's carbon dioxide or carbon four oxide, from all parts of the body to the lungs for excretion through respiration. It carries CO2 from all parts of the body to the lungs for what? Excretion through what? Respiration. That's the rhyme, huh? Yeah? You see, did you not see that kidney is not the only excretory organ? The lung is also what? An excretory organ. What is the lung excreting? CO2. CO2. Because it's not that in your body. Do you get that? You know, CO2 can be very terrible if you don't remove it from your body. Do you know what it can do? Do you know what it can do? What is carbon four oxide? It's not CO2. What type of oxygen is? What type of oxide is CO2? What are the types of oxides you know in chemistry? You have metallic, non-metallic. You have what? No, no, no. It's not trioxide. Alphoteric, you know? Is it not? Look at those children. So which one is the non-metallic? The oxide of what? Non-metals. Is it not? When they dissolve in water, what do they form? Acid. They become acid and hydride. Look at, look at, look at those children. They are not really, you know, that's terrible. I, I hope that viewers at home, they, they are answering correct. Do you get that? So CO2 is an acid and hydra. If you leave it in the blood, it will dissolve in the blood. And from what? Acid. Do you get that? <laughs> Very good. So that's why it needed to be what? Excreted. So number three. Mm? Carry, they carry um, uh, other products of metabolism. Other products of metabolism. From the source of other products of metabolism, from the source of production to all sites of excretion, in bracket you put, they carry other products of metabolism from the source of what? Okay. Production to the site of excretion, in bracket you put liver, comma, kidney. Because not everything is excreted in, from the kidney. Do you get that? Kidney is the, is the major excretory organ. Do we agree? But liver also function as what? As an excretory organ. Just as we have seen that lung is also what? An excretory organ. So don't be myopic. Hmm? Number four, function of the of the circulatory system is that they carry hormones from the endocrine organs. They carry what? Hormones from the endocrine organs to the target organs. They carry hormones from the endocrine organs to the what? Target organs. <coughs> you know, the endocrine organ may be very far away from the target organs. So without the circulatory system, 
That hormone is produced by the endocrine organ. We don't be able to get to the one, to the target organ. I'll give you an example. All of you here are females. Let me use a female organ to give you an example. You have ovaries. Ovary is a target organ of a hormone. And that hormone is follicle stimulating hormone. Where is follicle stimulating hormone produced? It's produced in the pituitary gland. Look at the pituitary gland here. It is through the blood, through the circulatory system, that the follicle stimulating hormone will travel to get to the ovary in your pelvis. Do you get that? Mm -hmm. So it's a what? It's a function. Hmm? Any other function of the circulatory system? Okay, number five, they ensure, they ensure that there is no excessive fluid in organs. There's no excessive fluid in organs. You see, these people, they return the fluid back to the heart. Do you get that? They ensure there's no excessive fluid in the organs. Yeah? So in bracket, prevention of what? Edema. They prevent what? Edema. Edema. Do you get that? Do you know that edema can occur anywhere? Is that only on the foot that edema occurs? Edema can occur in your large intestine, in your small intestine. You will not be able to digest food. You start vomiting. Do you get it? So if there is anything that impairs the drainage of blood from those organs, they will become what? Edematous. Abraham. Edema can even occur in the brain. That one can be very bad because that would be what? Disaster. Do you know why? Because your skull is what? Rigid. There will be no space for the brain to do what? To expand. Do you get it, Tata? Edema can occur in the lungs. Pulmonary what? Edema. That one is dead center. Instead of air, that place that air is supposed to enter, water will go and do what? Occupy there. That's very bad. So these are the functions of the circulatory system. The function to keep you what? Alive. Hmm? So the last segment of this our discussion that I've consumed a lot of times, I've tried to to make it as concise as possible. Uh, is the abnormalities? What are the abnormalities of the circulatory system? Why are we learning the circulatory system? The reason why, as a doctor, you should know, or as a nurse. You should know about the circulatory system. Or even as an engineer, you should know about the circulatory system. It's because of those functions. When there is abnormality, they will not be able to perform those uh, functions. So one of the abnormalities is the failure of the pump. One abnormality is what? Failure of the pump. What is the pump of the circulatory system? The heart. The heart failure. So what are the things that can cause heart failure? One. Is hypertension. Do you get that? Hypertension. Two is blockage of the coronary artery. You know coronary artery? Do you remember Mr. Coronary Artery? Mr. Coronary Artery is the artery that supplies the what? The heart. When it is blocked, the heart will not get blood supply. The heart will stop working. That is heart what? Failure. Cardiac what? Arrest. Is that okay? The other thing is hypertension. Hypertension is also a disease of the circulatory system. What is hypertension? Elevated blood pressure. Normally, there should always be blood pressure. But when it is elevated beyond normal, it's called what? Hypertension. We are just briefly talking about it. The other one is lymphedema. Remember what we said about the lymphatic system. You know what we said about the lymphatic system? Yes. Excess, the fluid that the veins cannot drain. It is drained. It's drained by the lymphatic, lymphatic system. Now, if there is anything that blocks the lymphatic system, it will result in what? Lymph edema. Example is that disease we call elephantiasis. The, the worm that causes elephantiasis, which is Wuchereria bancrofti, it blocks the lymphatic what? system. And the leg we do what? We swell up. They say it's okwa ba shoe. <laughs> the leg that doesn't enter is like shoe. So, lady, okay, ladies, and then any gentleman at all, we have brought into conclusion the circulatory system. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening. But before I say goodbye, is there any question from the people here?
Yeah, what's the question? You said that the heart beats and the pulse, they work in hand. They, they move, move in cons uh, consonants, yeah. Is, is there any difference between both of them as in the way they are made, they are produced? You said the heart beats is produced by, by the closure of the valves, yes. Is the, is the pulse produced in the same way? Yes, it's also the closure of that, but because the blood from the heart does not flow in a straight way. It flows in pulsatile manner. As in, boom, the two close. So that boom, will result the pulse. Will now result in the pulse you feel in the world, in the artery. Do you get it? It's just like pouring something. The heart will just pour and stop. Pour and stop. It's not continuous. It's like this. That is why when you cut a vein, because the vein does not pulsate, it just be bleeding. But when you cut an artery, you just be saying, to stop. It will stop because that's the way the heart is doing what pouring it. <laughs> Do you get that? Just like this is the valve. The valve will open, you pour, you close it, you open, you pour, you close it. That's how the heart works. Is that okay? Very good. Any other question? In absence of any other question, we call it a day. Thank you very much.